Hi students, um, today we're going to talk about maximum sustainable yield. I know some of you find this a little bit tricky. Before we get into the IB definitions, let's just talk about simply what it is. All it is, is the maximum amount of any animal or plant that we could take from the wild that's just going to allow that animal or plant to continue to thrive. So we don't want to take too much of it, right? Let's think about mushroom harvesting. If we go out to the forest and we pick some mushrooms, how many is too many so that they can't reproduce the following year so that there's, there's going to be enough for indefinitely, which is what we mean by sustainable. So there must be a number, like, do we, can we only take one or can we take three? Like, how many can we take? What is the maximum sustainable yield, right? The yield is what we take, what we um, need for harvesting for our food. Okay, maximum sustainable yield. Let's talk about what IB wants you to know about maximum sustainable yield. It comes up in topic 2.3, which is flows of energy, and that is because the net primary productivity, and I know you might have to go back to your notes on productivity because it's another tricky subject, but the net primary productivity is your maximum sustainable yield. So let's put that into simple terms. Net primary productivity. Primary is for plants. Um, net is how much is produced in a given time period. So the net primary productivity, if we produce 50 grams in a year and I take 50 grams, then I've only taken the amount that was produced that year. If the plant, um, the plant will then produce 50 grams the next year. So net primary productivity and maximum sustainability are very tightly linked together in that way. It also comes up in topic 4.3 in aquatic systems, and that's because fish are one of the last wild stocks of animals that we harvest. And um, so how do we determine how many fish is too many to catch? Um, how many is just right? And that's a very, very difficult thing to do. And so understanding maximum sustainable yield lets us set quotas for the fish. Um, but that's also controversial, you know, do the fishermen need more for an income? How much do we pay for fish in the supermarket? Um, and are we getting it right? And how do we get it right? So when we're thinking about the fish stocks, then we're thinking about the maximum sustainable yield and it will be net secondary productivity, right? So remember, secondary is for the consumers and primary is for the producers. All right, so that's what IB wants us to know. Okay, while we're talking about what it is that the IB wants you to know and um, what their expectations are, let's talk about the definition for sustainability because that word is in maximum sustainable yield, sustainability. What does the IB say? So if we go to the IB guide for ESS, it tells us sustainability is using and managing resources at a rate that allows them to maintain their current populations. Okay, so they should be able to continue staying at a level population. So now we've got that word population in there, we can think about, well, how do populations behave? And can we use that then to make sure that that population stays at a stable level? So, um, the harvest rate and the population growth, so the amount that we're taking and the amount that the population is growing, which remember is net secondary or primary productivity, that needs to be balanced. And so what scientists have found is if we harvest at the point where the growth is the, the highest, like, so if you've got sort of um, a population of fish and they're very low population of fish in a particular area, and then more and more fish, they're mating, and their population is growing. And do you remember a graph that looks something like this? Let's have a look at it. Um, okay, so this is the growth curve, and you have the lag phase in the bottom of the population, and the exponential phase, and then it reaches carrying capacity, and it's at stable equilibrium. 
So this point where the um, at the exponential stage, that point is where we can harvest, when the population has reached that. If we harvest in the lag phase, we're going to kill off the population. Okay, so we can harvest that. So this actually turns out to be half of the carrying capacity. And that gives us a formula that we can use. MSY, maximum sustainable yield, is K, carrying capacity, divided by 2. We can think about some other ways that we can calculate carrying capacity. So, for example, the using some of those ways we had to measure population. So, total biomass at time plus 1, so maybe like, how much biomass we have a year from now, and what our biomass is now, the difference between that. Um, or the, um, the amount of energy that is contained within that population a year from now minus um, current time, and also um, maybe like just how much it grows, like how much has your tree grown, how much, you know, so it's producing more mangoes, or maybe you're harvesting wood from it, so how much has it grown? And so then that amount minus um, how much you have at the moment. And I hope you're a little bit confused about, okay, I'm giving you the theory about this. And I hope you're a little bit confused thinking, well, how would I know what it's going to be in the future, right? And that's the exact problem is how do we measure those things? And of course, we can measure from looking at data from the past and extrapolating. So last year I had this much yield, so next year I should have this much yield as well. But it is very, very difficult to come up with these calculations. There are other things as well that make the calculation of maximum sustainable yield very difficult. So one is that, let's think about fish. Okay, because fish is probably, if you, when you have the IB exam, fish is probably going to be the thing that comes up. So if, um, if we're talking about fish, what age of fish are you catching? Because if you're catching all the reproducing ones, that's going to affect how many can continue into the future to produce new fish. So we need to consider the age structure of what is being caught. And what if the limiting factors, so we know carrying capacity is um, held at a certain point by limiting factors like disease or um, the amount of oxygen that's in the water. All these variables determine the carrying capacity. So what if those change? What if climate change happens? What if, um, you know, the water isn't as good quality? And so the carrying capacity lowers well, that's going to affect our uh, maximum sustainable yield, right? So um, our calculations are going to be off. Um, and also for now, if we have like a, a, a population of trees, we can do ecological surveys and, you know, estimate our yields. It's, it's still difficult, but it's really difficult with working in the ocean, a mobile animal like fish. Um, you know, we breathe air, we don't breathe water. It's very, very difficult to study fish. So how do we collect that data? And there are many ways. There's, there's ways of looking at population size using the mitochondrial DNA of the fish um, that can give us a lot of information, but that it's expensive. And, um, and then we have the, um, the socio-economic side of things, like how do we implement all of this? So we'll talk about that a little bit later in a case study about the fisheries, okay? But right now, let's just get to like, what is maximum sustainable yield? How do we calculate it? What, are, you know, can you evaluate maximum sustainable yield? Let's just have a look at a calculation. So here's a problem, calculate the maximum sustainable yield for a population of fish that have a carrying capacity of 100,000 individuals. Um, so miraculously, we know the carrying capacity here, maximum sustainable yield is carrying capacity divided by two. 
Um, so that's 100,000 divided by two. So if we harvest 50,000 fish, we will allow the population in theory to continue for another generation. Okay, so that is the summary of maximum sustainable yield. It's not that tricky. The part where it is tricky is they might not always ask in terms of carrying capacity. They might ask in terms of biomass at two different time periods or energy at two different time periods. And in another video, we'll look at more example questions of how the IB tend to link together all these concepts to so really test your deep understanding of it. All right, I hope that helped. Bye.